Pixel 5a 5G. Let's talk about it. What's going on everybody? Tech King Mike back again with another video and yes, Team Pixel, stand up. Your boy's in the building. We got the Pixel 5a 5 Jizzle in the house. Now, I've had this phone for about a week and I've got a few takeaways that I wanted to share with you guys about it. And I wanna to try to keep this video short. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm gonna give you a few reasons why I think this is an impressive upgrade over last year's Pixel 4a 5G. And there are a few areas where I wish Team Pixel may have done a few things differently. But overall, I wanna make sure that you guys understand at the end of this video, this is a solid device and I highly recommend it for $450. But let's talk about it. First and foremost, let's get into the build quality. The device is literally solid. When I tell you that the device is solid, I literally mean that it is an aluminum body frame phone. So it came from a plastic polycarbonate shell last year. So now we have a full metal shell. I'm happy with that. I like the fact that we got that upgrade and along with it, we got an IP67 water resistance and dust rating. So shout out to Team Pixel for actually giving us that rating on the device. For those of you that know, as I said in my video about the Fold, I need dust and water resistance with my devices unless I have to go through extra measures to make sure that they don't get messed up. So shout out to Team Pixel for giving us that upgrade on this. Another upgrade that we got is a slightly bigger screen. Last year's model was a 6.2 inch display on the 4A 5G. This year we have a 6.34 inch display on the 5A 5G. Now. That may not seem like a big difference, but to me it is. And considering the fact that they shrunk the uh, pinhole camera at the top just ever so slightly, it is a really and truly beautiful display. A 1080p HD display, I'm loving it. I have no issue with it at all. Another improvement that was made with the Pixel 5a over last year's is the significantly larger battery. Now we've got close to a 4,700 milliamp hour battery in this phone, folks. This thing is a battery champ. I'm gonna post a few screenshots from the first couple of days of usage somewhere here along the screen, and you guys will be able to see exactly what my battery life has been like with this device. Now, I average around four to five hours of screen on time on a good day, but I also am not on my phone all day like that. But I can tell you, I take the phone off the charger around 6 a.m. when I leave home to go to work and I put it on the charger around 8 or 9 a.m. p.m. when I get home and usually the phone still has about 20 to 25 percent left on the battery so the battery is very impressive on this device. What else do you get with the Pixel 5a? You get good cameras. You got a good front facing camera and you get a good rear set of cameras. You get a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 16 megapixel uh, ultra ultra wide so you get good cameras on the rear of the phone but there are some setbacks. For one, we have the lack of laser autofocus this year. Now, for me, that's not a make or break because the autofocus is really good as it is. And if you've come from an S20 Ultra like I have in the past, any autofocus is better than what I dealt with with that. But also, it's not bad. So don't let the lack of laser autofocus deter you from wanting to invest in the phone. There is a little bit of an issue that some users are experiencing with 4K60. Folks, here's the thing. 4K60 is not meant to be used as your everyday recording tool. It's just not. Most of the TV shows that you watch are in 30 FPS. Most of the movies that you watch are in 24 FPS. 4K60 is literally meant for more slow motion or other types of shooting, but it's not meant to be used as your go-to default shooting. Now, Google has it on the phone. Should it work without overheating? Of course. Have I experienced that? I have not. But I have seen other content creators and other YouTubers that have posted videos where they are experiencing it on their devices. So I can't act like it doesn't exist. I can say that it is not a make or break for me. And if you are considering this device, I'm not gonna tell you to skip it because of that. Mainly for the fact that I'm hoping Google will either fix it in a software update or when the retail uh, devices are shipped out to people. Cause this is a retail device, but when people get their devices in hand that they paid for, maybe it'll be fixed. But to me, I wanna make sure that you're aware of it, but it's not that big of a deal. So we can move on from that and leave that where it is. Now. Where are some of the setbacks on this device aside from the aforementioned 4K60? I wish it had wireless charging. I can deal with it not having it though because I have USB-C cables literally all around my house. So I can deal with it not having wireless charging. Another thing, I wish it had a 90 Hertz refresh rate. I just kind of wish that we had a high refresh rate on this device, but I'm cool with the 60 because the difference between 60 and 90 is only noticeable if you have the option, but it's more so of a bigger jump when you go from that 60 to that 120. So I'm okay with it not having the high refresh rate, but I just wish it had it. And 
on top of that, the only thing I really can say that I wish this device truly had and brought to the table was perhaps a slightly more powerful processor. But when I say that's a reach, the 765G that's in this phone, yes, it's the same from last year. It's literally the exact same internals plucked from the 485G, but it's still a good phone. I use a Galaxy S21 Ultra, an iPhone 12 Pro Max. I have a Galaxy Z Fold 3 on the way. I've used S20 Ultras, Note 20 Ultras. I've used a lot of flagship devices. I also use the Pixel 4a 5G. I use the Xiaomi Mi 11. And I can honestly say that in my personal opinion, the Pixel 5a 5G may not necessarily outperform or outshine those devices on the truly intensive heavy task. But when it comes to just carrying a phone every day to snap an occasional awesome picture, Google, what you're doing with the cameras. But when it comes to snapping an occasional photo, when it comes to calls, text messages, call screening, things of that nature, the Pixel just nails it. And for $450, I don't understand how people cannot recommend this device. I really and truly appreciate it. And I'll go so far as to say that if I wasn't a part of Team Pixel, based off of what I've seen from those who are, from people that I communicate with outside of YouTube, people that I know who are a part of Team Pixel, I would be interested in buying one of these devices with my own money. So no, not being paid to say this, not being coerced or anything by Team Pixel to say this, this is literally me giving you guys to it in the real, because this is just how I feel about it. The device is great. No device is perfect, but this one for the price, you cannot beat it. Now I wanna throw a few pictures up and let you guys take a look at those. So just see a few of the pictures that I've snapped and let me know what you guys think down below in the comments and then we'll wrap the video up. So enjoy. All right, so we are back and I hope you guys enjoy the little slideshow. Like I said, the cameras on this device are amazing. For a $450 phone, you can't beat what Google is doing. If anything that the Pixel 5a 5G has done for me, it has made me more excited for the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro to see what Google's gonna do with their own processor, to see what they're gonna do with those more powerful cameras, bigger displays, bigger form factor. I am excited, I'm ready, I'm ready to spend my money on those devices because I think that Google is really doing something awesome and I'm rooting for them, I really am. We just lost LG Mobile in the, in the mobile space and a lot of people were down in LG, bashing them when they put phones out and then as soon as they left and went by the wayside, all of a sudden everyone missed them. I don't want that to happen to Google. We need competition. We need competition. We need some new newness in the space. It can't always be Samsung and Apple in the North American market. We need more. Motorola is there, but Google, what you're doing with the pixels, I'm a fan. I will continue to be a fan. I'll continue to spend my money on them. I will continue to enjoy Team Pixel. I hope you guys are here to stay. And I hope that the 6 and the 6 Pro, if, if this is any indicator of what those are going to be like, I'm excited and I'm ready. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you, if you are a part of Team Pixel, if you are not a part of Team Pixel and you're considering it, this is a great phone to get you going and get started. Highly recommend it, highly suggest it. If you guys want to chop it up in the comments down below, let me know what you think about the Google Pixel. Have you had a Pixel? Are you planning on getting one? What are your thoughts on the 6 and the 6 Pro? As always, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you stay safe and stay blessed. I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm out.